So Fisker has filed for bankruptcy, guys. Its stock is down over 50%. Tesla can't seem to catch a bid, and analysts are getting more and more pessimistic on Tesla's growth standards. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Nick of Jupiter here. Today, we're going to talk about bankruptcy risk between amongst different EV companies. I'm going to show you guys what to take a look at and what warning signs to avoid and what other stocks might be at risk of going bankrupt or going to zero. Tesla is not one of those stocks. I made my Tesla bull case video two days ago. Check that video out right here. You guys know I'm bullish on a company like Lee. We'll get into that because Lee and BYD and Tesla. So Lee Auto, BYD from China, both of those and Tesla are three EV companies that are showing profits and showing growth. So those companies right now, they're growing. They're fundamentally, they look good. They look like solid growth stocks, but even they are having trouble rallying in terms of price action. So if they can't get going, you have no place trying to risk your money, your hard earned money in stocks that look like this. Stocks down 99%, whether you're bullish on them or not. So Fisker over here has reportedly hired bankruptcy consultants. Now, what is the, well, first of all, the stock looks like this. From a TA perspective, it's always dangerous to play below the 30 week moving average, right? If you're below the 30 week moving average, if you're tagged right in the weekly, you have this kind of weekly volume, it's very dangerous. You have to avoid something like that. It's the same as being below the 200 day moving average. What you want is to get above them with green tags, green volume, and then pull back and hold them as support. That's what you want. Look at a stock like CrowdStrike, for example. You need to be getting above the moving averages, holding them as support, tagging green with green volume and green tags on a Jupiter pendulum on the way up. That's what an uptrend looks like. You don't play the risky game of what Fisker and Rivian and these stocks look like. Okay, so from a fundamental standpoint, what can we say about Fisker that's down over 99%? Well, this is a stock right here or a company that has $1.31 billion of total debt on the books and only $300 million of cash. This is the biggest warning signs of all. You have four times as much debt than cash for a company that's not profitable, right? So they, they're in a debt situation in a high interest rate environment. They have to pay back all this money that they don't have, right? Because their cash is only one fourth of that of the money they owe. Meanwhile, you know, the interest rate is high. So their cash flow is taking a big hit every quarter paying or every month paying that interest rate back. Meanwhile, whatever cars they do sell aren't even making money. So the two biggest warning signs, if you're going to invest in a pure play EV stock or any growth stock in a new in a new industry, for that matter, is you got to look at their debt, right? Their liquidity situation, their capital structure. You got to look at their current ratio. And you have to look at their profitability because if they don't even have gross profit margins, I mean, what are we doing here? That means for everything they sell, they're losing money, right? Not even bottom line after operations and paying employees and SG&A. For everything they sell, they're already losing money. So every car they sell, let's say they sell a $100,000 car, they're losing $37,000. They're not even making money on the car sale to then take that money and go pay for their operating expenses and then see if they make profit bottom line they're not even they're already losing money on the sale of the car because the cogs the cost of goods sold are too high so that's gross profit margins negative they're losing money for every car they sell and they don't even have money right and then you go to the financial statement you're gonna go to the cash flow statement you're gonna look at their operations you're interested in their operations right there's sometimes investing financing activities these kind of companies need to raise either equity or debt hit the capital markets to try to survive but you go to these companies and they're burning 300 million a year they're burning $450 million a year every single year. So when you see that kind of thing, and you see that the company only has 300 million in the bank, let alone what they owe, even if they somehow magically survive, you don't invest ever in a company like that, right? So that's Fisker. They won't. Sur they don't. They can't survive another year. They they burn over. They burn 300 million a year. They don't. They don't even have runway for one year on their books. Let alone the debt they have to pay at a high interest rate environment. Let alone. They can't help themselves by selling more because they don't make money on the sale. Let alone, Fisker actually has negative reviews. People don't love their cars, right? They don't have good reviews on their product. So the product doesn't even sell itself. <laughs> if you can't even get the product right, you're fucked. Okay? So that being said, is the EV industry in trouble? Is it going away? Is it going to zero? No. Countries across the world continue to subsidize this, right? China's the biggest market in the world. Europe is the second biggest. America's third, but it's growing. 
Biden jumpstarts electric vehicle push with massive lithium loan. $2.6 billion loan for Lithium Americas to get this lithium refinery plant in Nevada up and running. They want to lower their dependence on China, on, on outsourcing everything, want to be fully self-sufficient here in the United States in terms of getting uh, these electric vehicle battery materials and manufacturing these batteries um, here in the States or over there in the States. And so they want to re reduce their reliance on foreign sources. And this is happening. It's happening in a big way. We talked in my previous video. You can go watch that one about the growth trends. I, I talk about this all the time, right? Cadillac teases opulent velocity electric V-series concept, which would be their third EV, right? Cadillac already has, has two EVs. Tesla restarts production at Gigafactory Berlin after arson attacks. So they're trying to take them down, smear campaigns, these kind of things, but, but they're gonna roll along. It's happening. Waymo starts fully autonomous rides in LA tomorrow, Austin later this year. Legacy school bus maker just delivered its 1,000th electric school bus over in the United States. So super cool, the electric school buses, right? Rivian is going big with the next EV. In our Rivian bull case video, we are actually saying, I think this is a very underrated segment of their business that they're not giving us too many hints about, but we know with the Amazon deal that there's more coming here. There's a lot of pilot programs in place, but we finally got some news. Rivian is extending its reach into the commercial vehicle market into a new partnership with JBPCO, for these commercial vans. So the Rivian fleet chases will underpin an all electric version of a Morgan C250 step van. That's effectively a Morgan Olsen bodied RHD Rivian designed specifically for Canada Post. Super cool, first of many. You can see the hardware, the software is Rivian and they have very nice reviews about this. And so, you know, we'll cover this in the next Rivian video. Subscribe to the channel because I cover all these companies, each earnings report and each week to keep you guys updated as well as with the techno analysis. A company like Rivian, right, is a bit different. Is Rivian going bankrupt like Fisker? Well, Rivian, they also aren't gross profitable, so they're very risky. But I do believe Rivian is gonna survive. I laid out my bull case. You can check out the bull case video, right? I do think they're gonna survive. They're a bit different, right? They're not gross profitable, but they are expecting to be gross profitable big uh, this year 2024 by q4 per vehicle basis and so i said that's the most important thing for them this year they then announced that they're not going they're not going ahead with their opening their plant in georgia they're going to save about 2.5 billion dollars in capex which is going to help them scale for the r2 production and if they can survive to the r2 I really believe they will survive as well as if they can reach those gross profit margins they said they would reach this year. Those are the two big things for Rivian. But the big difference is, or a couple of big differences for Rivian is they don't have one fourth of the debt in cash. They actually have more than double, they have double the cash than debt, right? They're a well-funded company. They're a well-funded company. They do have a bit of debt on the books, but it's not too abnormal for automakers for this industry. They have a lot of cash. They have runway for several years. They are trying to cut expenses and you know it shows with the, the with the stopping the plans for the production facility in georgia they're expected to reach gross profit margins on a vehicle basis this year so if all these things can culminate it's going to really help them right this is what you want to see you want to see revenues jumping you know high growth high growth almost doubling and the last thing for Rivian is they're the opposite. They're the number one rated consumer brand vehicle or EV or total vehicle in terms of customer satisfaction, right? Customers, absolutely, everybody loves their Rivian. Big difference from Fisker and their negative reviews. So you can see, you know, there's the gross profit margins right there per vehicle, but it was in a much worse place a year ago, right? So it's gone from losing 139,000 per vehicle, which is absolutely insane, to 43, right? They've shed the majority of that off and again, by the Q4 24, they expect to be making money. Then they're gonna ramp up. They have runway to survive two years, ramp up R2 production. That's the difference. They're gonna to come to market with a mass scale, lower priced vehicle. It's smaller and appeals to a much bigger audience. So I do think there's a bull case for Rivian. That being said, in the Rivian video, I told you guys it needs more time. The trade is not ready. The setup, the entry, the confirmation from a price action standpoint is not ready. I said in that video, it's at a $12 billion market cap, but it would be much more attractive in a single digit billions. And so it looks like we might be headed that way. Rivian, at, you know, for the risk you're taking here, it needs to be priced under 10 billion, right? Not 12 point something billion. And so we're heading that way. We'll see what happens. I'll update Rivian every few weeks as always. We'll see what happens on their next earnings call. And then from a trading standpoint, you just, you don't, you don't want, from an investment standpoint, you don't take this risk yet. Uh, there's no entry confirmation anyways. From a trading standpoint, it's the same thing I said about Fisker. Below the moving averages, red tags, red volumes, no confirmation yet. Rejecting the moving averages as resistance, there's just nothing to do.
There's nothing to do. What other companies would I be careful with? Well, if you go to Lee, I said Lee, Tesla, and BYD are the profitable ones. You don't have to, you know, they're growing like crazy and they're also profitable, very profitable on a gross project and even bottom line. So they're making actual profits. That's good. These are the ones you want to fundamentally look for your entries, DCA, invest in the long term. Tesla, BYD, and Lee. The other ones are growth stocks, right? I believe in ribbing long term, but we can be patient. We can wait for it to prove itself and uh, achieve its objectives, right? We need them to management to show us that they can achieve what they set out to achieve. It's an efficient management in place. It's going to co cut cost properly. Their quarter two closure of the facilities is going to bring those efficiencies and cogs that is going to lead them to that gross profitability this year. Okay, and then a company, another one that I think is a warning sign, something like Nikola, big history of uh, just being a scammy kind of company here. They make kind of um, commercial vehicles. And, you know, these guys, and numbers here, return on equity in negative 140%. They have more cash than that, but they don't have much cash on hand at all either, less than 500 million. And let's see what they are going through on a quarterly basis over here or on a yearly basis. We are yearly, you know, 500 million. So kind of back to the same situation as um, as Fisker. They don't have good reviews. There's there's a lot of scammy history with this corrupt corrupt with this company. And they don't have cash. They're a big danger of going bankrupt. The chart is terrible, right? Something like Lucid. Lucid makes premium vehicles, kind of like an American version of Neo. And Lucid is a six billion dollar market cap, so it's much smaller than Rivian. But these are terrible. It's still where Rivian was two years ago. It's actually at a worse place in terms of that, right? They don't have as much cash on hand, but they do have more cash. It's tight. Lucid, they sell very expensive vehicles, premium vehicles. And in this interest rate environment, I'd be very careful with a company like Lucid, burning $1.3 billion per year. So, you know, they have runway for maybe one or two years here, but they're really dependent on lowering interest rates. And I don't know if Lucid has that um, that new vehicle. It's a company I still need to deep dive into. Just Lucid, Fisker, Nicola, these, these kind of companies haven't attracted my attention in terms of a deep dive because they just seem like just terrible. They just seem like very risky companies, right? And I haven't heard good reviews from these either. Um, something like Polestar, which I made a bull case for, looks the best. Out of the risky ones, out of the ones that aren't Tesla, Lee, and BYD, the ones that aren't net profitable yet, I think something like Polestar is your best bet. It's not at some ridiculous you know, 10, 12 billion, it's at a $3 billion valuation. Difference between Polestar, it's doubling its revenue. Like I said, Riven, this is great. This looks like more growth than Riven. People love the cars. They call it basically an electric Volvo. It's very safe. It looks great, right? And they are actually gross profitable. So we need to see if management can just cut costs, more efficient operations, increase sales, which increased sales are projected um, strongly by analysts, and, and reach those net, net income margins. So this would be the one red flag. They have kind of three billion in debt and not a lot of cash here. I think they also kind of receive funding for, from Geely. So they're going to be well funded. I believe some, someone like Rivian, they're going to have a backstop, especially if consumers love it so much. Someone's going to fund them, especially since they're showing profitability, at least on a gross margin basis. But yeah, I would think something like Polestar would be a much better bet here than something like uh, Lucid or, or Nicola, right? So this is a company I deep dived into once where I made that Polestar video. So we'll do this one again for sure. I believe they have earnings here coming up. And, and from a technical perspective, none of these things are ready. Polestar tried to have a move here with some nice volume, e essentially uh, evening start on the moving averages and rejected them. And it's below them. Never tagged green, not even on the lower time frame here. So nothing to rush into yet in terms of that. But I'm excited to cover them again. They do have earnings here today. Here today. So interesting day for these earnings, right? Lastly, a company like Neo, I, I think like Rivian, they're a little pricey right now. They make premium, but they're also bringing out cheaper. They're expanding to Europe under some sub brands. I think Neo is going to survive. Not as much growth as someone like Rivian or Polestar, but still tremendous growth. It is a, you know kind of a hyperscaler growth stock. They have gross profit margins. So this is in the Polestar camp. This is in the Polestar camp, just a bit pricier. And so these two worth taking a look at. Rivian, I think, is going to flip that switch. And those will be the three I'm kind of most bullish on and I'll keep the most track of on this channel. Lastly, someone like Xpeng deserves a look, deserves a look. It's expensive here. It's expensive here. They're growing, right? They're growing. They, they, I know they have a lot of popular cars. 
they are barely eking out a gross profit margin. That's good to see. They have more cash than that. That's good to see. I just worry. I, this company is making like flying cars. So I'm going to do the deep dive into this one. You know, how much are they spending on CapEx and R&D? If you've seen the videos on social media, they're flying crazy helicopters and flying cars. Uh, I mean, look, flying car won't make the stock soar anytime soon. It looks like the Jetsons, uh, that cartoon from back in the day, what they're doing. And so it's interesting, but I just worry if this is the right environment. Uh, I mean, when you have the China one, you're combining the high interest rate, tough environment for a growth stock to grow in right now with the bearishness and, and particular bear case for China, its economics and its demographics. Both of those things combined and they're out here spending money uh, in R&D on, on, on kind of flying cars. So I'll have to take a look at what that's all about. So subscribe to the channel if you want to see that and especially subscribe if you're interested I'll keep you guys updated from a ta standpoint when there's confirmation one price action confirms that it's safe to enter some of these stocks what kind of setups we're looking for and of course each earnings each bull case i'll cover what went on in the earnings call and from a long-term investment perspective are we headed in the right direction to begin building positions much love guys thank you so much i'll see you in the next one peace